Hello, 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 each and every one of you fabulous souls out there. My name is Devan, and I thank you so much for choosing to invest your time and your resources. Yes, you'll get hard-earned hard -earned coins to come and spend this time with me. I appreciate you. I do not take it for granted. I know you can be anywhere else in the multiverse right now. You have chosen to come here to invest in yourself and to support this great work that I'm trying to do. All the money that you spend helps the ministry, helps the mission, helps the peoples. The more we help the people, hopefully we can spread more light up in this world, all up in this bitch, and make it a little bit better. Okay? So today's class is going to be about rebounding and rescinding dark magic intended to do evil and harm to you or someone you care about back from whence it came to where it came. Before I get too into it, I want to cleanse our space first with my trusty little cleanser here. I'm going to, you're going to hear three loud sounds. Just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of incense on. Y'all go ahead and get comfortable on it. You know, we don't take our time and learn some shit, okay? I love how intimate this candle, this candle class is. You know, it's a completely different vibe from the show. And so, you know, I could sit here and marinate, darling, just marinate this incense that I'm burning. And I'm opening a lot of the stuff that I'm using today brand new. This is the first class. I'm operating in this new energy and I'm getting my fucking life. I, and, I, and I thought about opening, no, I didn't even think about opening this shit. I was like, I'm just going to wait and open some of this shit on the show. I've been on this lesson I'm recording so that y'all can be a part of this new energy too. I'm like, And so this here is a frankincense and myrrh mixture that I use because it's already in the fucking stick i also have like the like the pebble kind too that you can use the coals with but i feel like some fire baby yes let's go ahead and cleanse you out baby yeah we, we have banished the demons we have exercised the demons okay <laughs> definitely got no part here well, play that for wishing us. So, Lord be with us, teach us, guide us, and cleanse us. Help us to learn how to protect and shield ourselves with the tools that you have given us. We put you first beyond these tools and beyond ourselves. We take the time to invite you into this lesson, into our souls, and into the deepest part of our existence, into our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me read, I want to read Psalm 58 too, before we get into it. And I should have given you an overview. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to be teaching you about, you know, how to dress these candles, what they mean, what the drawings mean to me. I'm going to give you like a book recommendation. We're talking about floor washes, baths, soap candle safety, and just pretty much everything, okay? And so Psalms 58 says, Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge of rightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart you work wickedness, ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb, they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent, they are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Let them melt away as waters which run continually, which he bendeth. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as cut in pieces. As a snail which melts it, let every one of them pass away. Let the untimely birth of a woman, like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Glory to God. Before your pots can feel the thorns, 
he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judgeth in the earth. Child, in other words, God gonna fuck some people up for getting involved in bullshit that they had no business doing. The part that gets me, and that was the answer of the eight, but how the Lord said he gonna make our enemies melt like a snail. <laughs> you know, you pour some salt, okay, on the motherfucking snail, he's gonna go ahead and shrivel up. That's why I've, I've, so one of the first things is you can use is salt. You know, before I get into it, you can take this basic table salt, pour it around your, your, your outside of your house, all around your house, pray over it first. It's a cute little blessing will do. You could mix a little bit of it like in your mop water, put it, definitely put it in your bath water. Not too much because you know, you don't want to be running your blood pressure up. You know, just a tablespoon or two, boo, <laughs> is all you need to help to cleanse and wash away witchcraft off of you. So if you've come to this class today, it's because you have probably have some sort of inclination or some sort of feeling like, you know, somebody might be working against you. So what does this mean? When somebody is trying to work against somebody, that means the devil has entered into them. Because really, like the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. So Judas was the enemy of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that the devil entered into Judas and began to put thoughts into his head. Before the devil entered into Judas, Judas, Judas was cool with the Lord. But one day he had a problem with Jesus and Judas did not question why. The people who are dark workers who let Satan enter into them and become, begin to envy people and want to hurt people. For somebody to be that angry with you, to sit down and cast witchcraft against you, that ain't nothing but the devil. It's pointless. It's stupid. It is dumb. It's incredibly short-sighted because they've already been written about in the book. They're going to shrivel up like a snail <laughs> and die. But the Lord allows this to happen because the Lord uses wickedness in order to strengthen the saints. The wicked are nothing more than a tool in the hands of the Lord to strengthen those of us who give a fuck about doing the work of God. If somebody got time to be casting dark, evil, black magic to try to hurt people, they're not concerned about the Lord because they either going to serve God or the devil. <laughs> it's going to be one or the other. You can get to have it both ways. And if somebody is wicked enough to even try this, let alone if the devil will listen to them, they're very far gone. Okay. But what the Lord has granted us is esoteric knowledge so that we can defend ourselves against this. I was taught this by Evangelist Nelson first, and then I went on to study. If you don't know who Evangelist Nelson is, you can either Google her. I think she has a couple of videos on YouTube, but she was mainly like a radio teacher. You know, coming up in her day, there was no YouTube. <laughs> and so she had her television ministry and everything like that when she was alive for sure. Not, not like your typical televangelist. This woman's highly gifted, clairvoyant, everything like that, the real deal. And so, so she taught me first, and I've studied this extensively in various other places. And so I bring it now to you because there's no reason to sit around and suffer. People get envious of you, those of you who own businesses. Basically, if you're trying to do anything other than sit around and do more of the same, you have enemies. If you have a house, if you have a car, if, if you, you, if you have anything at all, if somebody don't like you, that don't mean we sit around paranoid and worried about what they're going to do, but it does mean that we pay attention. We listen to what the Lord is telling us. And from time to time, we may need to break out something like this, you know, to help defend ourselves. The higher you go in this life, you have more and more enemies. You have to tighten the circle of the people around you, first of all. So if you, if you're trying to make major moves, first thing you got to understand, honey, is you're not going to have a whole lot of friends. You don't need but one or two any damn way. And then you can have you some outer realm associates, but your main ace bone coons in your close circle, mm -mm, mm -mm. you know, it's not going to, <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's just, it's not what you need because you know, Judas was able to get to the Lord because he was close in his camp. Those of us who come out of bad relationships when nobody else in the world could hurt us, who could hurt us? The people who we thought was our significant others, okay? So what I'm saying is, it ain't no sense in you doing all of this type of work 
if you're not paying attention to the company that you keep, because they can undo all of this, you know, sleeping around with people, you be careful as people get up and can do witchcraft on you in the middle of the night, you think you sleep and knock the hell out. You don't know what that other person is doing or has got up and done. Okay. You don't. And so so be careful who you let in your house, <laughs> who you have in your car. People leave, they curse gemstones and they could sprinkle powders and shit in your house and in your place of business. You don't mean be paranoid. You just, this is just what happens. You can go on websites and order this shit. Anybody can get it. And it's sent all over the world. People who you don't see, okay, are the people who, who like to work this work. The dark work I'm talking about, they dress in business suits, gym clothes. This, they don't run around everybody everybody don't look you know like like obviously like a witch or a warlock okay it's not so but be prayerful the first thing is god okay god overruled all of this this is not to take the place of god jesus christ and the holy ghost okay this is an accoutrement an accoutrement this is you doing your part this is you helping your ancestors your the ascended masters your angel team all of those people out. This is you saying, okay, I need y'all's help, but this is what I can do. We're not going to become addicted to this either. Okay. Because some people get way too caught up in, okay, does this candle do this? Does, is, does this incense do this? Does this bath powder do this? And it's like they get addicted to the process of this spell craft and they take their eyes off of the fact that God is in charge of it all. Because the Bible says that an undeserved curse won't have its desired effect. Okay, the Lord lets those curses through to strengthen us. As I stated, the Lord uses the wicked to strengthen the saint. But sometimes we need to help nudge it along in the right direction. So this, all of this is like a nudge. It's a human doing their part to aid the angels and our, our, our spirit team on the other side to help us. Pray for your angels. Pray for your ancestors. Pray for your spirit team. Yeah, they need strength. Any beings other than the high trinity itself needs to be refreshed. That's why angels need manna in the first place, boo. They got to eat, <laughs> not just to sit around and be cute. They need some more strength, okay? Pray for them angels, boo. <laughs> okay, help them help you, okay? Look, girl, I got, I got my Gabriel. <laughs> I got my Archangel Gabriel right here with me. <laughs> he off camera, but he looking at me. I need, <laughs> okay? I don't go nowhere without Gabriel. Okay, period. Period. So I am not to take the place of your relationship with God. I don't, you, you are not to worship me. You are not to look at me as like somebody who can instruct you better than God. Worship God. This, this path that you're on with learning this is one that's not like no one person knows everything about it. Okay, there's a million different ways to accomplish a million different tasks in the spiritual work world. I'm giving you many different options because you got to find what works for you. One person might like this type of candle or this color candle. Another person might like this floor wash or this bath. You know, you walk into a spiritual store, go online, a million different things, and they all do the same thing. What's the difference? Something is going to speak to one person over as opposed to another. See, we need those options. On one day, you might be drawn to this. On another day, you might be drawn to that. But you don't need to go in there and get everything. Okay, you need to you always be praying, fasting, okay? Even if you're on some kind of medical restriction, because the Lord says that certain demons can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. I don't give a shit if it's 30 minutes or something. And if you have dietary restrictions, we'll talk to your doctor. Fasting can be anything. Stopping playing video games. Stopping a fruit or a vegetable, something that you like, something that you're going to miss. You know, back in the day, I fasted three days, three days and three nights with no food and no water. People don't do that anymore. But see, the old folks raised me. I'm not saying that you do that. I don't know that many people can in this day and time, but I'm telling you how I was raised. I come out the spiritual old school boom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'm teaching you here today as a part of the sacred, sacred knowledge that I hold, you know, and have held it for a while. And I'm very, very thankful to be in a position where I could impart this because this needs to be shared. Always pray 
put God first and understand that all of this work is you doing your part to help the divine. Because we're not going to sit around and be lazy. We're going to pray. We're going to do, do our part. Period. Period. There's many different options. There's many different stores. These products today, wisdomproducts.com, uh, Healing Place SD, if they're still open. I, was, or I had a hard time finding their website the other day. Swerteluck.com. I mean, there's so many different places. Etsy, that you can go and get different type of candles and things like that. Different type of floor washes. You just got to compare the prices, the sales. No one place is better than another. I use them all. Some days at this sale, some days I'm just drawn to this store over that one. So I don't recommend one over the other. <laughs> it just depends on what's speaking to you, you know, at that, at that time. Um, this book here, Candle Magic for Beginners by Electra Valencia. I don't agree with everything in the book. I don't agree with anything anybody has ever said entirely except for the high trinity. But what I love about this book here is it gets into very interesting things. Like it just tells you like, what is candle magic? Why practice candle magic? These are the titles I'm reading, the history of candles, candle materials. It gets into like herbs and incenses and oils and interpreting the candle flames and the wax. I, for one, don't get into flame reading. Okay. I just don't. I've never felt drawn to it, to do that. If you want this book, I'm going to show it to you again. Anything you read or come across in this, in this magical world, okay, you ought to always put your own intuition and hear what the spirit is saying to you. This is somebody else's research and their experience. It doesn't mean everything in it has to be yours. It doesn't mean it's wrong or right. It's about whether or not it fits you. When we say magic, what we really mean is using the elements of air, earth, water, fire, spirit to push things along in our favor. Okay, to help us in some way through prayer, fasting, and the use of the elements. That is what we're doing. These baths and different things like that are usually infused with some type of oil or some type of herb that started in the earth. There's your earth element in that. And so, and so some people like to read the flames. They like to read the candles and see if they're like burned at the top. But some people do, some people don't. I, I will set them, show you how I set mine. Most of the times I do switch it up and I set my intention and I pray and I let it go. I don't come back and hover over that the flame do this and that the candle burn like that. I believe it once I pray and I leave it the fuck alone. Okay. I keep it super simple. I hope, you know, hope the day may come for you where, you know, highly spiritual people don't necessarily need to do Actually, I'll say this. Sometimes God is going to reverse it for you. I'm going to say it like this. It's according to your faith, be it unto you. Okay. But, but when we're shaken and broken, I'm happy that, we're happy that we have this sort of thing. But a lot of stuff gets rebounded and reflected that never even much gets to us in the first place. Anything God lets get through is to help us and to strengthen us. As we say, it happened. Everything happens for us, not to us. Everything happens for us, no matter how terrible and toxic it may seem, you know, it still is a net gain, depending on how we work our perspective. So with all of that, let me, let me show you the candles that I have today. This is your general reversing candle. Okay. This is your power over enemies candle. Okay. I hear Miss Felicity Cleopatra, part of my spirit team, talking to us. This is an uncrossing candle right here. That didn't hold this one up. So with these candles, you have a couple of things at play. Color vibration is everything. So are the drawings. It's like when you take and write things out, it's one of those things that has a, like a transference in between the physical world and the spiritual world. Incense is another one. Spiritual floor mops and the spiritual baths are another one. The, the sprinkling salts that you can put in your yard are another. Spice, cayenne pepper, and things like that are another. Certain things can affect them. 
One time when I was a child living in the country out there in Prairieville, Gonzalez, Evangelist Nelson had looked through the spirit during a church service and she was prophesying. And she told my dad to get like that. I think it was like a myrrh bath, uh, floor bath. And she was saying like, there's a foul spirit. And she was like, it's right there where like the living room meets the kitchen. That's how precise her sight was. Hell still is. Okay. Because I don't believe when people die, they cease to be. So I don't care to talk about dead people as though they're not here because they are. And so and she, she was like that exact spot. Now she was in church. She wasn't in the house. She said that exact spot. And that night he did that floor mop. And this, this demon let out this loud sound that sounded like one of those toy or toy rattlers that you rattle around. That thing made a noise, shook the blinds, hit the, the fireplace tool and flew out the fucking window, bitch. Okay. <laughs> he then has a ear, let him hear. These flames and fire work the same way. Some things that we can do as humans can affect the other realm. These things have that crossover power. Drawings have that crossover power too. And so, so this has on it what? These arrows, as you see, pointing out. See, this is, this is like an uncrossing. It's taking and directing away from you whatever had you tied up and bound. It says here like jinx removing health, wealth, peace, protection, and all of that. Many of these will have like prayers on the back of them. Read them if you want to. I don't. I say my own. This is how I am. I love how this one here has the black and white. It's kind of like that yin and yangy effect, but not really. It's giving us the, the sensation of a positive and uh, negative light and dark, which we all possess within us. But it's like it's taking that darkness that was there and it's reversing it. Okay. And especially on this side here, you can see it's reversing that shit and sending it back. So in this one here, I love like the skull and the flames protection from enemies. You can just imagine your enemies with their little heads on fire, burning and, and, and confused and shit as to why they spell is not working. <laughs> and so drawings matter like in the esoteric circles there's a like there's people like you can write say like your wishes on bay leaves and things like that and and manifest it in a certain way tattoos you know and things like that speak you know spiritually when i was when i was when i was a child it, it was on the day that I was going to go see Evangelist Nelson for my spiritual readings with her, where she would do her angelic handwriting. And it's like that hand would just go. It would just look like scribble anybody else. But she could read that scribble and God would tell her precise things. One time I had like three bumps on my back that I didn't know was there. And the spirit drew out a portrait of my back with the three bumps. She got up out of her counseling chair and went over and reached into my shirt and put some holy oil on it to heal it, even though the things were there. I was headed to her that day for one of those counseling sessions. And when I looked on my arm when I was in like high school or something like that, and it was like a square tattoo had been drawn on my arm. And it was like a, it was like a, it was, it was a bad omen is what it was. And I couldn't see what it was, but it was like a hill and something like that. And that thing was on me all day and I couldn't get it off. And I went through my whole one hour plus counseling session with Evangelist Nelson. And I remember that thing was there. And she was saying, you know, like it's a, it was like a hill on my path. You know, somebody was trying to work against me or something. It really is always the devil trying to work against somebody. Even at that young age, the devil was trying to take me out because he knew that I was a strong, that I am a strong light worker and I give a fuck about destroying his kingdom. I am one of the devil's chief enemies in this world. And Lucifer knows well the fuck who I am. And I'm not afraid of him. And we went through like two different oils before we were able to remove that tattoo from my arm. What am I telling you is that a spirit, and I don't know if that was an angel that drew that to warn us about what's going on. Or that was a foul spirit that drew it. I did not think to ask that. I was just amazed that I that that uh, that my body had been marked by some spirit. Okay. He that had the near let him hear. Drawings 
speak to both realms. Okay. And so that is why we put drawings on here. And you will see plain white candles, plain double color candles, triple color candles, seven dollar candles. Seven color candles all about your intention. You must clear your mind, clear your space, and focus on what it is you want God to do for you when you sit down and do this work. Put everybody out the house, put them in the other room, okay? And get yourself a space dedicated. When I live with people, I, you know, I just had it like by my bed. Some people dedicate it to their room. They may put it in their bathroom and close the door. You have kids running around because once you set these lights, you have to leave them burning. Okay, when you light them, you're going to put them in something like this. Evangelist Nelson always liked us to use a crystal bowl. You can go to like a cheap thrift store or something like that and get a cost-effective crystal bowl or catch Macy's on sale, bitch. You don't have to be Weatherford or Lalique. <laughs> you know, anybody, if you have some cute cut glass or something like that, it's enough to start with until you can afford you some crystal. Crystal resonates at a higher frequency than glass does. It's more pure. And that's why she said that. I have in here sand from the park. Yeah, I went down and stole it. Period. I did what I did. I, get, I don't know if you could fuck it or order sand or not. You know, you will go out there with your little grocery store bag, scoop, scoop. You'll be gone before the cops show up, bitch. Okay. <laughs> so why do we do this? After we set these in life, then we're going to set them in here. Okay. And this is done for the sole purpose of, you know, in case they break, sometimes the flames will, so depending on how the way the wick is done, sometimes the flame will lean right up against the glass and it'll crack, it'll shatter it. I probably only have seen that happen two or three times in my life. And I've been working with candles for years. And some people will tell you if the candle breaks, that means somebody's really working against you. I, I, whatever it is you choose to believe. But either way, you put it in sand. Evangelist no one always say water. Some people don't like water because some of these waxes apparently have oils mixed in them. So they believe that could cause like, a, like an oil water fire thing going on. And so I, I chose to go with sand. But if you're going to light these and leave these lit, you need to put them either in like water or sand in some type of bowl so that in case they break, you don't have a fire. So that is your candle safety. Keep them away from your children, away from your pets. My cats don't fuck with them. You know, so you got to know your pets. You got to know your kids. So I suggest some sort of private room until you get comfortable. For those of you who might live with somebody and you don't feel like you can, do this sort of thing around them. First of all, if that's the case, you don't need to be with them. <laughs> but, but there are people, and you can look them up on various websites and things like that, that will burn candles on your behalf and do rituals on your behalf, you know, for you. I, I'm not trying to do that because I'm about empowering people to do things themselves. And like I stated, this is a never ending field. I encourage you to study it yourself. It's quite interesting. It's one of the best things you can do for yourself. You don't have to be highly clairvoyant to do this, but you just have to know what you want and be clear minded and have enough faith. Jesus said, if you have faith, a grain of a mustard seed, just a mustard seed's worth. You could move mountains, darling, and cause trees to be uprooted and planted in the, in the ocean and the seas. You really can though. You just got to believe. And so. Another reason I don't get into hiring other practitioners is because a lot of them don't necessarily call on the high trinity, which I do. I don't, I don't have anything against people who want to call on these other deities or beings. I just don't know those deities and be, or beings. Therefore, I don't want to hire somebody who's going to call upon a God that I don't know. I don't want nothing that bad that I'm going to go outside of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, and I don't care how pure it sounds, they're not my God. You know, and so that, and that's, so that's, I can only teach what I know and operate in the realm that I know. And the, so let's see. So let's just start right with this candle here. So what I have over here, this is called like a reversible, it's like an incense. Okay. Mm, it's not really an incense, it's more like an aromatic, like herb thing. 
Okay. Let me show you one. They kind of like, they look like these little like flower petals kind of going on. I'm obsessed with this purple. Oh my gosh. So. I have this, this is called uncrossing oil. Let me see if you can see that. Probably good enough. But it just says like uncrossing all it looks. It just has like the same kind of like spell breaker situation going on. So in in a, any candle that is black, you can put, you know, I'm going to take this oil and I'm just going to like take a little bit on my hands. You can put it around the rim of the candle. You can put a little bit around the wax itself. You can take it and rub it up and down and all the way around. Whatever works for you. If you put it on the wax, though, I'm told that it will make the candle burn faster. Why? Why do we bother with this? To make the spell stronger. These herbs and everything make it stronger. All that we do is use to intensify it. What I'm teaching you today is like spell reversal, probably level 1.5 slash 2. It gets far more advanced than this. But for now, this is just what we're going to work with. This is highly effective, though. You know, hopefully they never, if, you know, if you need anything beyond that, you're doing a lot for the kingdom of light. I can tell you that. And hey, more power to you. And you can, you can burn these without dressing. This is called candle dressing. You can burn these without candle dressing. You don't have to have the, the herbs to start with. You don't have to do the extra oils. You can just do the candle itself. You do want to take these candles and wash them with water, okay? Just to wash off everybody's juju and everything because they've been handled on their way to you, you know, or, you know, before it got to the store, whether it was shipped to you. And so, you know, you just wash it with plain old water. Some people do salt water if you want to dry them off. Some people like to trim the candle wick. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It is believed that if you trim it, that you will have a cleaner burn. Some people believe if you don't trim it, you have a bigger flame and that'll also make the candle burn quicker. So I have this fancy ass candle trimmer here and I'm just going to like fucking snip at this bitch. Okay, girl, some scissors will do just fine too. <laughs> if you don't have that. <laughs> okay. I was, I was many years in, in the candle work before I bothered to get one of these. <laughs> And I got it for just my house candles, just for the fragrant ones. But it's, it's, it's handy as hell. I'm fine. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to take a little bit of this here. Pinch it. Pinch it. You, you know, you might want to grind them up in one of those pestle things. I don't feel like doing that. And, and so I won't, it breaks up by hand quite nicely. If you ask me, oh, this one's super cute too. Okay, so that's kind of like how that looks. Child, you could put glitter in candles in anything that, that is, that, that can enhance a vibration. If I was to put glitter in here, I would do like black and red or maybe just like red glitter. So that one is set and ready to go over here. Just so I want to have them even. What I'm going to do is just take some more of this uncrossing oil. I'm going to choose to rub it actually on the wax just a little bit. You don't need nothing but a smudging's worth. <laughs> okay. If I want it to. I could take like some cayenne pepper and put it in these white candles to help intensify it or cinnamon as well, because it's a spice. It has transference in between this realm and the next realm. Okay, I'm gonna put this power over enemies off to the side. If I want to, I could put reversal herbs in here. Do I want to do a triple herb dip or do I just want to keep it over here? I'm not feeling triple herby. I'm not feeling triple herby. 
when it comes to this, why we have white candles besides the fact that they say uncrossing and power over enemies. So this is kind of like your level one. You can just do this set together. You would never, ever want to burn a reversal candle by itself. You always want to have a white candle so that if, so that if somebody is working against you and they're trying to send it back, this is going to shield, this white vibration is going to block that. Okay. Again, this is just level one or two. There's ways to use black candles and things like that. And black candles are not inherently evil as all on how you use them. That may come along or it may not. But for now, you know, in a different lesson, but for now, we're going to do stick with this here. Again, this is advanced enough to, 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 to this, this will work as long as your intention and your, is right and your faith is high. But the white candle protects you from anybody trying to rebound it back on you. Because this is meant for you to defend yourself. If you're defending yourself against somebody, God is going to rally and help you. Again, this is just you doing your part against an evil person who is a shepherd for the devil and a conduit of Satan who's trying to hurt you. Okay. So this is sufficient enough. If you want to take it up a notch, that's when we add this protection over enemies too. <laughs> You will find both of these in many, many different colors. You know, they might be green if you want to uncross your money or pink if you want to uncross your love life and different things like that. And so, so this here is a nice, cute set. Some people like to read different Psalms over them. You can if you want to. A lot of people like to go with the 23rd Psalm. There's like 150 Psalms, bitch. And pretty much all of them have something to do against, to do with fighting your enemies. Okay. So just pick a, just pick a psalm and go with it. Read through the psalms, baby, and get your life. Okay. <laughs> so. Brand new pack of matches went down to the dollar store, honey. When it comes to candle work, you always use wooden matches. You don't use a cigarette lighter. I use that for the incense. Sometimes I do use a wooden match for it. You know, it just depends. You need natural wood to go with this natural fire. You don't use a lighter when you're doing candle work. Okay. It does not matter which one of these you light first. I'm going to start with white. You'll hear people say things like, so mote it be, you know, and different things like that. <laughs> this is another way of saying, so, you know, so may it be. What's that? Woo. When I have a candle with herbs in them. I always like to watch it and be sure that they don't light on fire. <laughs> okay. Before I walk away, it go twirling about, <laughs> you know, as I, as I am prone to do. Now, again, these would be going into this sand. I'm just not going to put it there since we have this pretty display going here. And I like the way this is looking right now. Some people like to use gemstones. If you have something like, you know, like say like a black tourmaline, a black, you know, onyx, any kind of like black stone. Okay. You can wear it while you're doing the ceremony. You can, after you set it down, you can lean it you know, like in the sand or, or in the water, just against it. Some people even take stones, get like a very small version of it. You know, some, something tiny like this. Some people even put it in the candle. Okay. Or, or you just lean it up against it down at the base of, of, of the candle. If you want to go that route, you would use a black stone for this sort of work, perhaps against a reversal candle or a black candle. If you're using like a black protection over enemies candle or a black uncrossing because in the spiritual world, black consumes evil. Okay. It's, it's actually a very good color. Some people use it for destruction, shame on them because they're only going to destroy themselves. 
but it actually consumes, it's like black is considered like, it, it's like it consumes all colors. It consumes the evil. It consumes the evil being thrown at you. And or you can use like a clear quartz or some sort of stone that represents purity, you know, to the pair with your white stones. So you want to make your white candles. You want to make it make sense. You know, you want your pure stones with your pure candles, you know, black stone to help, to help this candle absorb the evil. That's the way it works. I can feel this lovely sensation already. I am loving it. I hope you all are feeling set free already. I have this piece of parchment paper here. Okay. It's just brown paper, brown paper bag. I think this might've been a Trader Joe's bag or a Whole Foods bag. Brown paper, parchment paper, you can order actual straight up parchment paper. If this is if in its natural form, because we know white paper has been well bleached and shit. In spell words, anything you write down, like I said, you can use a bay leaf or you can use parchment paper. What I've seen some people do, if you want to take it up a notch, you would take, I would say a pencil, like a lead pencil, and you can write different things on here. Say you could write, I send back in reverse all spells, hexes, and witchcraft being worked against me. And you would write it seven times. Okay. And then you would fold it away from you. And then you could place it under the candle. Okay. You could write, if you know who the fuck your enemy is, you could write your name, write their name, and then your name over their name seven times and then fold it away and then put it under the candle. Um, and after you write their name and then your name over their name seven times, you can also write, I reverse and send back everything this person is doing against me. You know, that's only if you know that for sure, we do not do this to hurt people only to defend ourselves. And so when you get ready to, and so you handle everything with the parchment paper, why? when you get ready to dispose of these candles, when they're done, you can just throw them in the trash if you want to. I don't like to recycle something that's been used for such purposes. You can put them in a black bag, for instance, if you desire to throw them away. The black bag, again, just reflects, you know, consuming the negativity and keeping it tamed can tie it up, knot it three times, and with gratitude, dispose of it, okay? Um, let's talk about the, the baths and floor washes. So this here, you see it has the same face on it that the candle does, okay? Indian Ponderoso, you'll find a lot of Spanish written on these things because the veladores, you know, they call the candles down in España. Uh, a lot of candle burning happens in, in, in Spanish places. I'm telling you, the stuff is worldwide. This is just a different version of it. This here is the Seven Sisters of New Orleans, baby. Yes. And so what's the difference here? One's a slightly darker, lighter color. You see them say things like triple strength, double strength. You know, it's just about preference and whatever you want. These things smell divine. And usually, oh my God, I mean, just the smell alone will just give you so much life. So this will say like bath and wash. So you can take a few capfuls. Like this will say, fill bath with warm water, pour in half a bottle, read the 23rd Psalm, concentrate on your desires. That's the bath ritual. It's saying floor wash. Fill bucket with warm water, scrub floor, concentrate on your desires. I would not put half of this into anything unless you're really going through something because you'll end up having to buy more. I would do like a few capfuls, maybe three or seven, if you want to be spiritual with your numbers. Sometimes I'll just pour, you know, you know, you just kind of like got to feel how much it works for you. You may want to do half a bottle, you know, who knows? But that's that's the recommendation because they're just trying to help you out. But you always want to focus on, you know, what God is telling you to do because the Lord says he will crown our efforts with success. So even if you don't do any of this exactly right, 
per se, whatever exactly right is supposed to be, it's not like it's not going to work because the Lord said he will crown your efforts with success. So it means you don't have to be perfect. You just have to show that you're willing to try. And that is enough. So this is used to complement the spell work up here. You don't have to do this. Okay. It will work fine by itself. But if you're feeling a nudging by the spirit to take it a, a step further, then absolutely you can do a bath. You can, so you'll put it in your tub and you just marinate in there, you know, probably at least a good 10 minutes to let it do its work. And what this is doing is washing evil off of you. Bad spirits tend to follow us around. It is said in certain circles that spirits cannot go over water. I believe that certain ones can, if they're strong enough, and there's other ones you can't. Some people say it's a good idea to drive over bodies of water as often as you can. For that reason, they help to shake off some of that juju following you around. This takes it to the next level and it just washes it off of you right then. If you live in a place where you don't have a tub, you can put this in like a spray bottle and spray it on yourself or just dab a little on the towel and make it rain, boo. Do it that way. Because we got to always find a way to make some shit work. I'm quiet. You could take it a step further. And what do I have here? This is Spellbreaker. So, and this is Go Away Evil. So I could not get that they actually have reversal soap too, but it's so popular. <laughs> It's so popular, it can be hard to find at times. Yeah. And so, uh, let me go ahead and open this up here. Mm -hmm. God. And so you see it has a little Indian on there and everything. Indio Products is a really big, Jesus Christ, popular name in the industry. <laughs> You know, like even these have the drawings on it, the hand, the little devil in the background or running like, oh shit, I'd have been found out. Yeah, we see you, Satan. We know what you add. Your, your spell won't work here. You've been blocked and banished, bitch. Okay, blocked and banished. We're not playing that shit. We're not having it. We're <laughs> driving your ass out. You cause problems. Mm. <sighs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> but here's a little bit darker. Just Girl, just the smell of it. Mm -mm -mm, for the smell of it. <laughs> Fucking A, yes. And so, this is a different way to accomplish the same things. Sometimes I might just do the soap by itself. Sometimes I might just do the floor wash by itself. Sometimes I'll do all of this together. This goes back to what I was saying earlier options. You got to go with what resonates. For, for you and what you're picking up on in the spirit that's what you want to work for you these are all options you know it's much easier to travel if you're traveling with this soap here you can take a little bit of this and put it into a smaller container because these are eight ounces let's take it a step further this same uncrossing oil that i used earlier you can put like three or seven three or six drops of this in your bath water too to help strengthen the bath these herbs even though they are they're they're reversible herbs but they're still herbs all the same you could put some of these in your bath water too okay depending on the type of herb you could strictly speaking they boil these and, th and then strain them and then use that, the results of that boiled water and make a bath out of these dried herbs well. Okay. Talk about incense. This is, this is Anna Riva's reversible incense, bitch. Yes. There's several different kinds of this. There's a reversible bath, salt, sprinkling salt. And once you go into these websites, there's just a lot of them, a lot of different options. When you go on the website, you can search for a reversible spell breaker, money drawing, whatever the case may be. And it'll bring up, depending on how the website's organized, hopefully it will bring up a lot of different options in this realm. Okay. So this is, you know, a powder. This is like a powder type of an incense here. So what I'm going to do 
take this incense burner. Got my fresh set of coals here. You can get them from Amazon, bitch. That incense stick I had earlier, Amazon. You get so much of this on Amazon, child. I probably would adopt my kid on Amazon in another 10 years when I go buy his little ass. Okay. <laughs> Amazon, like me a 10 year old, please. Who doesn't talk back? Thank you very fucking much. And so we take our coal. Maybe some of you have not seen coal, uh, coal incense before. I let the ash build up in here because it's easier for me to access and to work with. But every now and then I do dump it out just to clear up that old energy. But when it's new, reaching down in there can be kind of like a chore. You can get these charcoals on Etsy, on Amazon. You'll find some burn better than others. You have to find what works for you. I said that we're just going to like light this little sucker. When we see the orange sparkles like that start, we put the bitch down. So you don't want to mess up our motherfucking hands and nails, bitch. Um, so, and then we're simply take. And put, you know, I'm a Sagittarius, so I gotta like, you know, add a little bit extra. <laughs> just just cause I can. Just cause I can. <laughs> now in certain circles, people like to say waft it in your direction. You can go go like one, two, three to bring in what you're trying to accomplish. Incense is another one of those things that has an impact both in the physical realm as well as in the spiritual realm. You can smoke devils out of your house and from around you. So you can set this in one room. You can pick it up and take it all throughout the house. You know, whatever it is that you feel like you want to do. You can also take some of that reversible oil and put a few drops. Okay. On the incense too, boom. You always want to watch something like that to be sure it doesn't light on fire, but that usually won't. And, and, you know, and that's the way that goes. Household things you can use. Cayenne pepper and salt, like I mentioned earlier, you can put them on your threshold of your front and back side doors. Like this is uncrossing oil. They have reversible oils and things like that. You always want to be anointing your head with some type of holy oil. You could take olive oil, pray over it. It's the same thing that, that, that we used to use in the Pentecostal church and it works. Your, your basic olive oil from the store. If you have enough faith, pray over it. It's blessed. You don't need a priest, a pope, a press, or nothing like that to pray over your own shit. Okay. <laughs> if you, and so. That you probably already have in the pantry, but you can get specific oils. You can anoint the doorpost of your home inside and out, all throughout the house, your beds, and different things like that. Um, those holy oils, when you get them, you can put them, anoint like the inside of the soles of your shoe. And, you know, you know, the things like that are really, 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 really good for cleansing. A selenite wand, quartz, you know, different gemstones like this are good to keep around the house, like this amethyst that I have. And give me a second. Let me go get my selenite wand. Let me show you something real quick with that. So this is a selenite wand. They come in all different shapes and sizes. This is supposed to be one of the cheapest gemstones you could get. Some people charge way too damn much for gemstones and crystals because they think people, I don't know why people overcharge for shit. It's really fucked up. But this is not supposed to be heavily costly, okay? This is a really large piece. It's just, they don't have to be this big. And those of us who start to study, you know, gem lore and things like that, selenite, is one of the few crystals that, as we say, don't need to be recharged. So if you have, say, like this tiger's eye and you're using it for spiritual purposes, it is, it is stated that you're going to, eventually the, the, the work that it's doing, the negativity that it's finding is going to drain it. You, need to, you can recharge a stone by putting it in sunlight, moonlight, 
washing it in salt water, or you can just set it on selenite or just lean it against it. How long, however long you feel, they say it doesn't take that long. If you've been really fighting some bad juju, you might want to leave the ditch overnight. But selenite, it's, fra it's a fragile stone, easy to destroy and break, but the purest of all next to probably like quartz or something like that. But I, but it can, it does not need to be recharged. It does not need to be put in sunlight or moonlight and you cannot put water on it. It's super fragile, but it, it can purify any other stone. And so you would put it on here to recharge your other stones. You can take this, put a little piece in your car, in your office. I keep it all up in the house, bitch. Okay. You can put it, attach it to your bed somehow to help you sleep better and to drain negative energy. Okay. Out of your bed. In just about any other kind of way, it consumes evil. Okay. I used to use this in my massage therapy practice a lot. You can take and do like an aura sweep of your body and just go like all around. Okay. Usually do it much slower than this, but I'm just showing you like you would go like and really trying to, you really try to feel what you're feeling and really imagine that you're like surgically cutting the evil of fuck up off of you. And then if you want, when you get down to your feet, you can like hit the ground as if to release it to the earth, as, as if to release it to the earth. If you want to, um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't do that. It's pretty effective and you should feel the difference like immediately if you're in tune and sensitive enough for that. You can do like your chakras with it, you know, and work your way on down. You can take your children, girl, get the cats too. Okay, the canaries and the motherfucking dog cleanse every fucking body, bitch, because we don't have time for the bullshit. And <laughs> no, girl, we don't have the time. <laughs> and so I mentioned like your cars, there are, I say like reversible sprays. I couldn't find one. Like I told you, the bitches are very fucking popular. You have like a house spray. And it, it, you can just search for it on, on the website or anybody's website or just Google it. It's just like a spray. It's also like reversible spray, money drawing spray, love drawing spray. And you can spray your car with that. You, you can take those anointing oils and anoint your car. You always want to pray over a car when you get them anyway. And especially if it's a used car, you always want to dismiss the negative energy. If you get a new house, Especially if it's a house that someone lived in before, you always want to do a cleansing ritual, bitch. <laughs> and go through there and banish whatever the fuck happened before you showed up. You don't need other people's problems creeping up. The old people always used to tell us to, to change out our mop, mop bucket and broom and dustpan every year as to not carry the old problems from the previous year into the new year. I sure in the fuck still do. I still do with the old people teach and so yeah i'm sorry i plugged my laptop in so so yeah i still i change out all the you know my mops and everything each year you you a new house a new car you always want to cleanse it even if it is newly built because you had or even if it is newly purchased car, because you had other people test driving that car. You had a, people working in the house, building the car. You don't know what was building the house. You don't know what was said, what was spoken, you know, in those houses and things like that. Even if they're brand new before you got in there, you always want to make your space, your space, your energy in it, your pure energy in it, period, period. And you take these floor watches. I forgot to tell you about that part. So the tub, yeah, you put in the mop bucket. You always want to sweep your house. Even if you don't have time to mop your house every week, at least sweep the dish every week. Evangelist Nelson was adamant about that. At least do a sweep. You should do a sweep and mop weekly, but if not, at least just do a sweep. She would tell us to sweep the house from the back to the front. 
you know, take that shit on out the door and out. I sweep mine from the back to the front, you know, put it in the dustpan <laughs> and then, you know, put it, take, you know, take it on out to the trash that way. <laughs> you know, I think, I think, the, I think the old people used to sweep that shit on out the front and door and down the driveway. You know, you know, grandma always used to be sweeping the damn driveway and shit and everything. <laughs> hey, I don't do all that. I just let mother nature and the rain take care of, you know, cleansing. <laughs> Clean the cleanse in the driveway and whatnot, but, uh, <laughs> and so, but, you know, so you'll go through and you'll sweep your house first and then you'll put, you know, however much of this, you want to do half of it or a few drops or whatever. You can take some of the unfrosting oil and put it in the mop bucket water too. And then you clean that house. You can do that while you're on the day that you mop. You can burn some incense too. That goes that goes really, really nicely on a mop day when you have so many incense going, whether it's the same type of incense or a general frankincense in myrrh, something like this, like again, what I had earlier. Or any type of incense is good. If you don't do nothing else, at least put some incense on and do a floor sweep every week. Okay. You know, just to help to just just to let all the beings that be know that you are taking command of your energetic space and then you're not going to allow any outside energies in that you don't approve of. Okay, this is you putting your mark down and saying, no, I'll run this bitch. We're going to keep it cleansed. And you're understanding that there are forces, forces that exist that do not want you to succeed, that do not want you to be happy. And you're saying, no. I'm going to fight back. I understand this exists. I'm going to be happy in this world. So let me, you know, skip, skip buying a martini this week and just buy a couple of candles, you know, and just invest in myself this way. Um, once you get more adept with this, you, you know, you don't, it, like I said, these are all options. You can do some of this or a different version of this. You could get like a, a simple tea light white candle and use it for an intention of dismissing negative energy, and you can. Now, it, it's not as thorough as this. This is like kind of like a general, okay, let's just touch it up. Let's just judge it up a bit, sort of, energy you're working with there. This here is very like, okay, we sending all of this shit back to where it came from. Hmm. And sometimes I've done this work here, and people who I know are enemies, you know, fools for the devil is what they really are. Petty, jealous people who are very low vibrational. Many of them are found in churches. They won't find me in a church. And then against you, if you want to go to church, but not everybody in church is saved. And, you know, I see them the next day looking rough. <laughs> you know, these people who call themselves going to come against me, me of all people. But the devil gonna have to, the devil, the, the wicked gonna do wickedly. Cause when people want to play with dark arts, evil magic, and they call up these demons and devils and go in and try to work for them, what they don't understand is when they call those dark forces up, they then have to control that thing. But a devil is gonna be a devil. The devil might let them control it for a second, but then the devil gonna do what the fuck they want to do. And then if it wants to fuck them up, then it's going to go fuck them up. And then if it comes to a light worker who was protected by their work, by their angels, by God himself, that devil's not going to be able to do any damn thing. And then they're going to go back to that person who summoned them and kick their fucking ass because they woke that thing up for no damn reason. <laughs> so, and then I, I see people call themselves trying to work with, working with me looking toe to fuck up. I'm all like, bitch, you did it to yourself. I was over here minding my business, as as you all are too, trying to do the will of the Lord, trying to raise your families, pray, take care of yourself, help your community, run your businesses, make your money, run your coin, sort out your own purpose. As you damn sure they're not there trying to attack people. You understand karmic scales and that it will always be balanced. Okay, this is a part of, of those scales being balanced right here. All of this work. So I'm saying I'll let say this is this is highly effective, but you don't have to worry about what's gonna happen to the people working against you. You set your attentions, let God handle those people and the devil, because God's gonna put them into the devil's hand and let him devour and consume them for being 
so base as to reduce to such an evil level to try to intentionally work against people. Okay. People can subconsciously wish you evil too. This is why we don't go around speaking our intentions to, to people. When you're trying to build that new business, if you're trying to move somewhere, okay, trying to buy that car, keep your fucking mouth shut. Do a person have to sit down in front of a candle or an altar or do some sort of dark work against you? You may tell somebody something and they just think that they don't want it to happen. The God, the universe underneath the power of God weighs the thoughts and actions, the intentions as well as spoken words. So a person might unintentionally cross you up by strongly wishing you don't have the thing that you said you're trying to work for. This is why people be like, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Don't tell everybody what you're doing. Because even if they're not Yes, Felicity said, amen. Hey, baby girls, my little, my cat, my spirit animal down there. And come on up here, child. And, uh, you know, and uh, they might accidentally do it. You know, I made so many moves this year. Girl on the slit, on the low, didn't nobody, where the fuck I was? No, where the fuck I was, what the fuck I was doing? Okay. <laughs> You know, I, you pop, I pop up here. I'm in this country. I popped up there over in that country. I had too many eyes on me and too many people trying to figure out what the hell I was doing and certain people from the past that I was trying to get away from, several of them, you know, trying to track my moves and shit. And I was like, it ain't your damn business. They could not have stopped me because I'm on a divine destiny. But I did not want extra fucking problems and shit being thrown at me by telling all my fucking business. So it can show up. Let me get more granular. It can show up like if you tell people that you're traveling and you're about to go to some exotic country and their basic asses haven't been no damn where. Or they're so basic in their emotions, even though they haven't been anywhere, that they hate the fact that you're going. Okay, that's what makes somebody basic. Not because they haven't been anywhere, because they hate the fact that you're going somewhere that they haven't, or they wish they could live your life. Them thinking that, that they hate the fact that you're going and they won't tell you this could cause you to have complications as you travel. You might find yourself confused as you're trying to pack shit up. You might forget shit, forget your passport, miss the train, miss the flight. It, it can come up that way. I'm telling you, you know, People have a lot of power to manifest and it can be done intentionally and unintentionally. So keep your mouth shut when you're making major moves. Like I said earlier, none of this is going to help you if you do not strain out and refine the company that you keep because not everybody is your friend. If you made it to this course, this means that you are aware that you're trying to do good and there's people who don't want you to do good, which is the devil through them. Okay. <laughs> so, so just to recap, mind the company you keep. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. These are all options that have been given to you. Okay. We'll start. We'll cleanse our space. Go through, research the meaning of different gemstones. Research you know, the different candles and things out there that are going to work for you. This is an example of how I might do it on any given ritual or night or ceremony. I don't necessarily wait for a new moon or a full moon or a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse or for Venus to be in Pluto or for Mercury retrograde. Or if you want to follow the Zodiac and do all that, great, wonderful. I am not against it. I think there's a lot of credence to be given to that. You know, a lot of stuff is literally written in the stars. However, bitch, if we need help. We need it now. We don't have time to wait for the moon to twirl around in a certain position, bitch. <laughs> we need this shit right now. And like I said, God said he will crown your efforts with success. God overrules the zodiac. God overrules the planetary alignments in the universe. God is control of it all. You know, and it's according to your faith. It will be on to you. Okay. And so 
there is, like I said, there's nothing wrong if you want to do these things according to the moon, full moon, new moon. I'm saying I don't take time to follow that because God cuts through all time, all planetary alignments. He's here right now, period, done. So, let me know if you have any questions or comments. I hope that you find great results, not just in your candle work, but in whatever good work that you're trying to do. I pray that you won't be hindered. I pray that the good work will go forward. We are a team of light workers. We are a collective in the sense that we are not alone. You know, we work separate from each other. Some people who live around other spiritual people get the opportunity, the luxurious opportunity to work with other people. You know, you got to work with what you have. But don't forget to meditate. It's important that you have incredibly good spiritual hygiene. Spiritual hygiene being your prayers, your fasting, your meditation, your yoga, especially yin yoga. Yin yoga, Y-I-N, when you slow down and become present, it's like a mental exercise. Mental exercises is when you still your mind. It's like when your body rests and you heal, you got to stop your mind from overrunning and overworking and thinking all the time and just let it be quiet. That is how you heal your mind. Okay, that's how you heal your mind. Okay, I've given you kitties enough for right now. There's always more we can learn. This is a practice and it's called a practice for a reason because nobody's an expert. Nobody knows it all. There's no perfect way to do it. The spells that have been written out there that you'll come across in different spell books, you could have written many of those yourself. It's all about saying words in a certain way that have a certain sort of poetry to them or poetic value, but it's all in all about the intention and how you mean it from your heart. And so... I was just like, I just like, I feel like I don't want to let y'all go. It's like, I don't want to close this class out, <laughs> but I've got to, I've got to, I really, really love doing this. Oh my God, I do. Child, I gotta go. Okay. I want to thank you for this time I've spent with your children. Whoever has purchased this class or is looking at somebody, if they're sharing it with a friend. So be it then, help them, help them. As long as their intentions are pure and they've told you the truth about everything and they're coming to you with an open heart and an honest mind, when they pray here and when you hear Lord do, and when you hear Lord forgive, act on their behalf, do it because I ask you to. And because whatever I ask, you said you would say so. Help your children, Lord, to be protected, delivered, and saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank y'all so much for joining me. Again, my name is Devannon. Let's go out there and change the world, y'all.